Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you how to do this effect. Alright, so first of all we need a guy that is running, so let's do this mockup by the 3, go into runs, and now we have a run. I need him to go around in a circle, so I'm going to drop it down to geometry, and then here I'm going to drop down a circle, and I want to drop down a transform, and here I'm going to rotate this guy, and going to make him to gonna make him 4.5. Uh, so we have this guy here now. And now one problem with the mockup by 3 is like if you look at this geometry, you have this enable constraints. You don't have that on this guy. But I'm going to work around that by dropping down a new geometry. And call this man. And in here, I'm going to drop down an agent sub. And I'm going to point to this mockup by 3. So now I have an agent that's doing the same thing. On this now, I can select this enable constraints. I'm going to click on this little icon here, and I'm going to choose follow path. Select the path. I'm going to select this circle, and I'm going to click enter two times. And now we have him running, but backwards. So what this has done now is it's created this little chop network, uh, and then it's just pointing to that. Like here in the path, I'm going to change this Z to C plus instead. So go in the positive C direction. Uh, and yeah, that's it. So now we have him running around here. Awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is to go out here. I'm going to hide everything. I'm going to drop down a new geometry. That would be the sand. Call this Sandman. So go in here. I'm going to drop down an object merge. And I'm going to pick this guy up. So go to man and this guy. But now you see he's not running in a circle anymore. That's just because the constraint is on this top node. To get that, we need to do this transform into this object. So now we have him running around. Perfect. So now I'm just going to unpack him to make him an ordinary geometry because he's an agent primitive right now. So now he's back being in geometry. I'm going to drop down a grain source. And let's see what we've got here. I'm going to get this point separation down to 0 0.05. I don't want a source offset. I want the packing density to be 3, so this is pretty good. But let's go further and do some jitter because everything is a bit too even right now. And it turns on this relaxed iteration, which I don't want, so I'll turn that off. So just the jitter scale, looks good. So next thing we need to do is decide what frame the different particles will be unstuck on. And I want them to start at the top and end at the bottom. So And I'm going to use the Y position to do that. So the first thing I need to do is to get the maximum Y position and the minimum Y position. So I'm going to do that by dropping down a wrangle. In here I'm going to set Y pos equals to P Y. So now I have a float. Now every particle has a Y position in this Y pos. And then I'm going to use two attribute promote to get the minimax. And I can do that by promoting them to detail attributes. So I go to take Y pos make that to detail and maximum so here is my y max and I don't want to delete the original because I can do it once again and I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna make this y min and I'm gonna set minimum so now I'm gonna take the, the minimum of y and make that the detail attribute and now I can delete the original so if I look here I will have two detail attributes one y max and y min Great. So let's drop down another wrangle. So in here, first of all, just otherwise I will forget it, I want to set the P scale because the grain solve that we're going to use later this is the P scale. So I'm going to set that to 0 0.01. And then I need to bring in my detail attributes. So Y min is equal to detail 0, Y min. And y max equals to detail zero y max. Cool. Now we're going to create our attribute the unstuck frame. So unstuck frame, and I'm going to use a fit, and I'm going to read the point position y, and then I want the range to start with the y max because that's top so I want it to start there and then I want it to end at y min uh, and so the first frame at the top would start at 
f start, so it will be out in the first frame, and then I will put f end minus 50. So if we look at this now, we have an unstuck frame for each particle. So we can visualize that by dropping down a blast. And I set this to point. And also, if unstuck frame is less than the current frame, then delete them. So now we can see that is eating away our character. Don't worry about these weird things here. It's not going to be a problem later. But one thing I don't like is that it's, it's a bit too even right now. So I'm going to put in a random value here with a y. So I'm going to do plus random at ptnum times 0 0.1. So now it's less even. Cool. Uh, all right. So now I just want to make sure that this just happened on the first frame. So I'm going to put down a time shift. I'm going to remove the blast. Actually, we don't need the blast anymore. Uh, on this time shift, it's going to be f start. Cool. The next thing I want to do is I just want the particles in the simulation later to be emitted from from the edge of the guy, and I'm going to use the solver to sort this out. So I'm going to drop down the solver here. I'm going to pin this view here because you can never trust what you see when you are inside the solver. First, before I do anything, I because now it's just static and I want the particles to move with the geometry. So let's take the geometry up here and plug that into the second port. And then within here I'm going to use a point to deform. I'm going to take the particles and I want them to be deformed by the geometry. And the middle here is the rest position. So I'm going to use the first frame start and make that the rest geometry. So in this way now have the particles moving with the geometry again. Cool. But now let's do let's put all the unstuck particles in an unstuck group. So I'm gonna go in here and do what we did before is so if frame is bigger than unstuck frame, then put that particle in this group. So let's do y group. If you type group and underscore it's automatically gonna be in a group. So unstuck equals to 1. This doesn't make anything different from what we had before, but one thing we can do now, just because we have this, is we can drop down another wrangle, and this wrangle will just run on the guys in the unstuck group, and then we're going to do a new group here. They're going to be group gone. So what this means is like the first time it runs, it's got to be unstuck but not gone, but the next time it runs, it's going to be unstuck and gone. Uh, the only thing we need to do to make this work though is that we need to copy the groups from the previous frame because now it's just re-evaluating everything on every frame. So let's make a group copy and then I would do let's copy the groups from the previous frame. I'm going to put a star here. So in this way first we can do the unstuck and uh, delete non-selected. So these are all the unstuck guys and then we do a new blast. And now we delete all the gone ones. And I'm just going to put gone here. Oh, I have to spell this. So now if we look at this, we just have the middle part. Cool, that is what we want. Oh, one other thing I'm going to do, I want to have the velocity. So I'm going to drop down a trail. Because I want to have some velocity when the particles are emitted. So I'm going to do compute velocity. And then I'm going to drop down a DOP network. And in here, I'm going to have a pop solver. I'm going to have a pop object. And a pop source. Some gravity. A ground plane. Remember to change the order. And here I want to use points. I want to use the first context geometry. I want to have not as many particles. 
Uh, and I don't want to use the full velocity. I just want to inherit a part of it. Oh, I need to like so. So now as you can see it emits. And I'm also gonna up the stop steps a little bit. So the only thing we need to do now is to go and add a pop grain. And in here I want some friction, so I'm gonna put this to one, put scale kinetic, and then I'm gonna put the clumping to 0 0.5 because I want them to be in clumps. So now if we look at this, it looks pretty cool. Sweet. So the only thing we need to do now is to drop down a blast up here and put this to unstuck and then merge the two together. Like so. So there you go. I hope that you found this useful and see you next time.